Hi, today we're going to talk about a property, it's a universal property of waves called refraction. Why does refraction come about? It's because I've been a little loose previously talking about the speed of a wave, the speed of a wave. Well, the speed of a wave depends on what it's moving through. Now, for everyday waves you're very familiar with, you might appreciate this, for example, a wave that's going along a string, a transverse wave. What happens if the density of that string increases, for example? Then the wave is actually going to slow down because it takes uh, more force to accelerate more inertia, and a thicker string then will propagate the wave, but slower than before. Now, let's see, air waves travel at different speeds depending on the density of the air, similar deal. Water waves, for example, as a water wave going across the ocean comes shallower, as the depth decreases of the water, the wave slows down. Anyway, you do not need to know any of those examples in this course. What you do need to know about, though, is what happens to electromagnetic waves. That's very important. Wait a minute, we're thinking, electromagnetic waves, I thought that the speed was always the speed of light, C. Not necessarily. That's just an upper limit which only applies ideally in a vacuum. Yes, I know, an electromagnetic wave does not need any medium to go through at all. There is no medium. It can go through a vacuum. But what happens if it is going through a medium? The most common one we've been thinking about so far is air, and we have pretty much ignored the fact that the air was there, because air is fairly close to being a vacuum, but not exactly. But now I'm going to give you some other examples where light waves travel through something that's clearly not air at all. For example, light waves going through a transparent material like water, light waves going through a transparent material like glass, quartz, uh, even other materials like that, then we cannot expect that the speed is going to stay the speed of light. And here's the actual formula. We need a factor to show us how much the light gets slowed down, the slowdown factor, as it goes through some other transparent medium. And this is called the index of refraction n. So there's the actual speed that the light wave, electromagnetic waves, will go through when it's not going through a vacuum. If it's a vacuum, n equals 1. The index of refraction, no slowdown effect, would be 1. V equals c. But in general, the index of refraction is going to be a little bit more than 1. It might be quite a bit more than 1. And this tells you how much the speed of light slows down in those medium. So for the purposes of this course, I'll probably give you what the index of refraction is, but handy ones to keep in mind when you're doing problems and so on. We use this all the time. Water, index of refraction 1.3. So yes, that means 30% slower light waves when they go through water. It's still pretty fast, but it is slower. And then a 50% slowdown when light waves go through glass, for example. And uh, by the way, there are some extreme conditions of matter, extreme cases where n can be very, very large, and you can effectively slow down light enormously, maybe by factors of hundreds of thousands. Those are very weird, um, not at all everyday experiences. Now, this is not going to be on the exam, but I do want you to just know, I'll just say once, why is it that light waves don't travel through a medium at the speed of light? Why are they slowed down? What is actually happening here, for those of you who are interested, is that these media, such as water or glass, any of these media that light waves go through, actually consists of material that have electrons and positive charges in them. Everything does. And the electrons and protons can be separated. How do you think they respond when an electric fluctuating field, that is part of an electromagnetic wave, comes by oscillating through the material. It wants to spread apart the plus and minus charges, move them to the side, then move them back and forth, and that causes those charges in the medium to actually emit their own light waves, or to re-emit the light waves. It's a little bit complicated maybe, but that causes a delay. They don't go through at the same original speed that they would if there was nothing in the way. So this is entirely related to how much electrons and positive charges are in the material the light's trying to go through. In other words, if you're into Maxwell's equations, I'm talking about the dielectric constant. So the, if the dielectric constant is 1, that's a vacuum. There's no plus and minus charges in it. But if the dielectric constant is substantial, that means a substantial slowing down of the light wave as it goes through the medium. And my favorite, uh, I wouldn't quite call it everyday, material for highly slowing down 
background light is diamond. Index of refraction 2.4 times, more than halves the speed of light, and that produces some of the most spectacular visual effects. So right now you're thinking, okay, uh, if light was going so fast anyway, you know, 300,000 kilometers per second, so who cares if it's slowed down by 50% or not? It doesn't seem like a very big deal. Well, yes, if the light waves were going straight through the medium, I would agree with you that isn't really going to make much of a difference. But what if the light waves are going from uh, a vacuum or air, which we'll treat as a vacuum here, almost a vacuum, and then they go into a medium that has a high index of refraction, like uh, passing uh, in through the surface of water. What happens if those light waves go through at an angle. That's what this uh, lecture is about. What happens if the light waves go from one index of refraction into maybe a higher index of refraction at an angle? What's going to happen then? That gets interesting. What happens is refraction.